Welcome to lecture 10 of biology 116 entitled plant transport systems. In this lecture we're going to be going over in a little bit more detail the idea of how plants move things around within them. And when we say move things we typically mean things like water, the dissolved materials within the water, and also things like sugars. So in order to understand this we'll begin with the first simple introductory flowchart and we'll entitle this first flowchart introduction. As we're going through this flowchart, I want you to take a look at figure 36.2 as I think it's a great summary figure to really understand the basic idea behind how a plant moves things around, how plant transport essentially works. Now, in order for plant transport to work, this is all going to be in a response to or in an effort to have the plant uh, it succeed. So basically what we're saying here is that there's going to be a certain success of plants that can be achieved. Plants want to succeed just like any other living thing and this success is dependent on two critical things. The first thing is the ability to gather so that's the keyword here, ability to gather resources from their environment so resources from their environment. So we have to, as plants, plants have to get stuff and that's one of their critical sort of successful characteristics. If they can gather from their environment at a great rate, then they will be successful. But also, this gathering is useless unless plants can do the second important sort of route to success and that is transport. That's this whole lecture. The idea is to transport those materials that you get transport materials to where they are needed. So a plant can get those materials from their environment and then you have to transport them to where they are needed. And that will give you a successful plant. Now, furthermore, what we want to focus on in this lecture is the idea of transport, but more specifically it's going to be within vascular plants because those are the ones that are best at transport. They have those vascular systems. So we're going to be looking at some vascular plant adaptations. What makes these plants successful in their gathering of resources and in their transport of materials? Materials and resources would essentially mean the same thing here. So vascular plant adaptations. What are they? First and foremost, the idea of this ability to gather resources from their environment can simply be stated as acquisition. Vascular plants have an adaptive capability of acquiring things very well from their environment. Acquisition in a nutshell. This is going to be acquiring things like H2O, water from the soil. Also with H2O oftentimes comes minerals. Minerals are important for growth of plants. With that also would come light is another very important thing that we have to acquire as a plant from the environment and also CO2. Both, all of these things come from the environment. Most importantly I want you to notice that light and CO2, those are two critical inputs of photosynthesis that eventually turn into sugars, right? So once you've acquired these critically important things based off of the adaptations that you have, which we'll get into uh, in a little bit more detail as we move forward, you have to transport. Now when you're transporting things, you have to transport what you've acquired, simply speaking, a water, minerals, both of those things were acquired, right? But now you're actually not going to be transporting light or CO2, you're actually going to convert this via photosynthesis to sugars. And now once you've done that conversion process, those sugars have to be transported throughout the plant, much like the water, much like the minerals, all throughout the plant, the vascular plant uh, specifically. And then finally, last sort of subdivision of this flowchart and this idea of introduction to transport um, is I like to call it the key to success. How can this plant, this vascular plant, succeed um, the best way possible? It has to do the following. The key to success in a vascular plant is a balance. And specifically, that's going to be balancing a trade-off is what we would call it. So you balance a specific trade-off between two things that we're going to be talking about in great detail today. The balancing trade-off is going to be between maximizing photosynthesis 
So you're trying to do the most respiration. You're trying to do the most metabolism. You're trying to get the most light and get the most CO2 and make the most sugars. That's the maximizing photosynthesis part. But also, as you're doing this, in order for you to be successful, you also have to minimize something. There also has to be a minimizing of H2O loss. You have to minimize as much water loss as you can while maximizing as much photosynthetic products as you can. So you have to keep the H2O, keep the minerals that come within it. Use the light and CO2 to maximize photosynthesis and all while you're doing that, you have to make sure that when you're transporting the H2O, the minerals and the sugars, you're minimizing the amount of water that is lost. We're going to be seeing many different ways that a plant balances this trade-off, a vascular plant specifically, as we move forward through this lecture.